Today, I'm going to share with you how people change. But I'm also going to share one of the main reasons that people don't change. Okay, so everything changes. Right now, it's not quite spring, but it will soon be spring. Change is in the air. Human beings are always changing. However, there are some circumstances which stop people from changing. And one of those circumstances is when someone experienced a trauma, traumatic stress. Now, I started working with people who had trauma way back in 1995. And I've worked with people who've had traumatic experiences ever since then. So I guess that's about 27 years. And there's a nice way to think about traumatic experience. I was going to bring a jigsaw, but in the end I didn't bring one. But think about it like this, a thousand piece jigsaw, jigsaw, this is your life. When you have a trauma, it's by definition out of the blue and it's, it's like a big thing. Right? And it throws the jigsaw of your life up into the air. And when the pieces fall, they don't always all come down in the right place. So some pieces of your life jigsaw are in the wrong place. How could this happen to me? Did I bring this on myself? Is it my responsibility? And these pieces being in the wrong place affect you, but you don't know that they're in the wrong place, so you don't know what to do about it. And so it feels that you're stuck. And traumatic experiences have a real quality of making you feel stuck. Which brings me to part two. How do people change? Well, there are two ways that people change. The first way I'm going to demonstrate, that's why I needed the big field, I used to call it the two millimeter shift, but now I call it the two degree shift. Let me show you. I need to get some props. What I want to do is to show you the power of making small changes. Now, the first way that people change is by trying to figure out how to open a ball of string. No, I'm joking. The first way that people change is to own the decisions and choices that they make. Everybody makes a phenomenal amount of decisions or slash choices. It's the same basic thing every day. An average would be something like 35,000 decisions or choices a day. You are the sum total of all of the choices that you've made in your life. That's obvious, right? Now, an immediate objection would be, yeah, but I don't choose the stuff that I do. You know, most of the stuff happens to me. And that's the problem with trauma. We think about traumatic experiences as happening to us, which is fair enough. But you know, if there's one thing that you could say about life. You've always got to expect something to happen. But that's not the whole problem. Very quickly, when you when you were treating people who've had uh, traumatic experiences, the trauma itself becomes secondary and the main problem becomes the response to the trauma. So I would generally say, it's not what happens to you that defines your life. It's how you deal with it, it's what you do with it. It's how you process it and it's how you start to make choices based upon that traumatic experience. Again, that brings us back to, you are the sum total of the choices that you've made. Now. How do people change? Well, the first thing you have to do is to recognize the power of the two degree shift. And I'm gonna use this ball of string and the associated props, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. We start off with where you are, which is where you are. I've got 80 meters of string. Now I need to make two 40 meter um, lines. So this is called a Portland plotter. I was looking for a protractor at home, but I haven't got one, so I'm using this. It measures angles, it's just for, for like ch marine chart work. I take the, the Portland plotter and I adjust it so that that there is the angle of straight ahead. And we move it just two degrees. 
Right, so two degree shift over a course. Now this is the principle, okay? With a trauma, you feel like you're stuck. And in a sense, you get stuck because the jigsaw puzzle of your life is not in the right place. You don't know why it's not in the right place and it's difficult to know what to do. When you feel stuck, it's easy to forget that you move through time. But if we make a very small change, like a two degree shift uh, in our, our angle, or the direction we're traveling, what happens is that we end up making incremental changes without any incremental effort. So a two degree shift changes the direction you're traveling in. And once you've made the two degree shift, <clears throat> you just have to carry on with it. So what would a two degree shift be? Well, it would be, for instance, the decision to stop worrying, to use some worry tools to stop worrying, or to stop ruminating, or to stop overthinking. It would be uh, using some tools to get better sleep, or to deal with intrusive images. As you can see, we've made quite a substantial change over where we would have been if we'd allowed, or if we'd accepted things as they are, and nothing would have been different. So the first way that people change is that you recognise you are the sum total of the decisions and choices that you make. Fair enough, most of them are unconscious, but nevertheless, you are the sum total of those choices. Let's make a two degree shift. Let's just change the smallest thing we can change so that uh, we get a little bit of uh, a change of direction and we persist with that. And my recommendation would be something like just for instance have a zero tolerance for worry. There are lots of worry tools and worry actually is quite a, an easy thing to manage once you start applying tools. So you make the two degree shift, you follow that through and you persist and as you move through time the change that you make becomes more and more apparent, bigger and bigger and bigger and then you start to really feel the benefits. The mistake people make is that they stop doing stuff before they recognize the change that they've experienced. The second way that people change is this. You are the stories that you tell yourself. Now, it might seem like a crazy thing to say, but the beliefs that you have, the things that you say, the, the things you describe yourself as, these are the stories you tell yourself. Oh, I'm useless, oh, I'm rubbish, oh, I'm a failure, oh, nobody likes me, oh, it never works out for me. These are the stories you tell yourself. When you've had a traumatic experience, you tell yourself stories which are self-defeating and unhelpful. It's my fault. I should have done better. Um, why did it happen to me? There's something wrong with me. So we have to manage the stories you tell because I promise you, you change the stories you tell about yourself, you'll have a different experience and nobody will care. Nobody else will care because nobody knows the stories that you tell yourself. Why not have a more useful story? Why not tell yourself a story of resilience? Yeah, I've experienced some difficult stuff, but you know what? I've come through and I'm stronger. That's called post-traumatic growth. Why not tell yourself stories of ability? I work really hard. I'm good at some things. Depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress, the, the, the effects of trauma are always a combination of feeling stuck, not making the two degree shift in direction so that you have a better experience, and also like an accumulation of the negative stories that you tell yourself. So how do people change? They take responsibility for their decisions and they find better stories to tell about themselves. If you find this interesting, please subscribe, uh, like and share. Thanks a lot.